Did you know that in ancient Greece, the course of your life was charted at birth? Hello and welcome to World History Encyclopedia. My name is Kelly and today's video is all about two different groups of three goddesses. One trio assigned your fate and the other dished out wrath to those who upended the natural order. Today we are looking at the Moirai and the Erinyes, the fates and the furies of Greek myth. Don't forget the easiest way to support us is by giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel and hitting that bell icon for notifications so you don't miss out on any new uploads. World History Encyclopedia is a non-profit organization and you can find us on Patreon, a brilliant site where you can support our work and receive exclusive benefits in return. Your support helps us create videos twice a week. So make sure to check it out via the pop-up in the top corner of the screen or via the Patreon link down below. The Moirai, which in Greek means parts or allotted portions, were the three goddesses of fate and destiny. Clotho, the spinner, Lachesis, the disposer of lots, and Atropus, she who cannot be turned, are the three goddesses responsible for, and the personification of, the destiny of the individual from birth to death. Each of the three Moirai, or fates, had a specific job. When a person was born, Clotho would begin spinning the thread of life. Lachesis had the job of measuring that thread, and upon the mortal's death, Atropus would cut it. In Hesiod's Theogony, the fates are noted as the children of Zeus and Themis, but also as the daughters of Nyx, the primordial goddess of night. The three sisters are most commonly noted as the daughters of Nyx, but Zeus was connected to the three goddesses as either their leader, as Zeus Moira Gates, or subject to their rule. In the tragedy Prometheus Bound by Aeschylus, Zeus is described as having less power than the Moirai, and even he, the king of the gods, cannot escape what they have decreed. The fates appear in many pieces of literature from ancient Greece, and with variations elsewhere, as deities dispensing fortune, both good and bad, spinning, measuring, and cutting the thread of life. So the common epithets used for the fates, the spinners, and the relentless ones are very fitting for their roles in Greek mythology. As goddesses who begin spinning the thread at one's birth, they often appear with Aletheia, the goddess of childbirth. And as the goddesses who end lives, they also became associated with death as the Moirai Thantoio. They were described and depicted differently by different authors and through time. In literature, they were often described as old and ugly women, but when they were depicted in art, they weren't necessarily depicted as such. As with many figures in ancient art, the Moirai were associated with specific symbols, Clotho with a spindle, Lachesis with a staff, and Atropos with a scroll, some scales, or scissors. Although serving an important role in Greek myth, the fates didn't feature in many tales, and when they did, they were there to symbolize one's inescapable destiny, or sometimes to warn of future events. When Meliga was born to his mother Althea, the Moirai arrived and warned her that her son would die when a particular piece of wood from the fireplace became completely consumed with flame. And later, Althea used that information to kill her son after he had killed two of her brothers. Moving on to another trio of goddesses, this time those responsible for exacting divine retribution, we have the Arinyes, or Furies. Like the Moirai, the Arinyes encouraged a belief in an ordered universe, which operated according to divine law. When someone disrupted the natural order of things, the Furies were let loose. One of their responsibilities was carrying out curses with punishments, including disease and madness. They were also responsible for punishing those who swore false oaths, and the dark nature of their responsibilities led them to be associated with Hades and the Underworld. As goddesses in the Underworld, they took part in the judgement of new souls. After a new soul had been judged by the three judges of the Underworld, they would be handed to the Furies, who would either purify the good and let them continue on to their reward, or they would drag the wicked to the dark dungeons of Tartarus, where they were to stay for eternity. 
some of those wicked dead would have had to endure torture in Tartarus for their misdeeds, and often it was the Furies who would oversee these torments. In addition to carrying out curses, they were particularly associated with punishing those who committed crimes involving breaches in the laws of hospitality, or in regards to family, such as matricide and patricide. Many myths are informed by the threat of the wrath of the Furies regarding the laws of hospitality, including the famous tale of Bellerophon, where the young hero is spared from execution by the two kings who are his hosts, but want him dead. Neither wants to risk a visit from the Furies by murdering a guest. Regarding family, the crime of matricide is famously dealt with in Aeschylus' Libation Bearers, where Orestes avenges the murder of his father by killing his mother, and so is plagued by the Arrhenes in retribution. Hesiod tells us that the Furies, although he doesn't specify how many there are, are the daughters of Gaia, the earth, by her mate Uranus, the sky born from his blood striking the earth after he was castrated. In the Orphic hymns, though, the Furies are identified as the daughters of the king and queen of the underworld, Hades and Persephone. Just as with the Moirai, some sources, such as Aeschylus's The Eumenides, tell us that the Arrhenes were the daughters of Nyx, the personification of night. Although Hesiod doesn't number or name the Furies, the three goddesses are named in other pieces of ancient literature, as Alecto, Megara, and Tisiphone, and their names can be translated to unceasing, grudge, and murder retribution. They were also sometimes referred to as the Gracious Ones, or Eumenides, and Homer in his Odyssey calls them the Avenging Furies. In art, the Furies were often depicted with wings, and snakes were often coiled around them or in their hair. Aeschylus, in his Libation Bearers, likened the Arrhenes with the Gorgons, and Lycophron described their clothing as black robes. In the Eumenides by Aeschylus, the Furies are finally tamed by Athena, and are afterwards known as the Protectors of Athens. But throughout most of their literary and artistic history, they were terrifying entities who frightened people into behaving according to accepted traditional cultural values. Why do you think the ancient Greeks believed their fates were predestined by three goddesses? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of our new uploads. This video was brought to you by World History Encyclopedia. For more great articles and interactive content, head to our website via the link below. If you like my sweater, you can find this design and a bunch more in our shop at worldhistory.store, or you can find a link for it down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you soon with another video.